now that we have the nodes placed and also the conduits placed for our stormwater drainage network, the next thing that we need to do is compute how much water is coming into each one of these inlets. Now there's a few ways you can do it. One way is you can manually put in Q value for those inlets if you manually calculate the Q value. And if you were to do that, you would simply select that particular inlet, go to the utility properties of it, and underneath the drainage, you would go down through here and go to the flows and put that particular Q value in this flow additional carryover option. You'd put in that Q value right here. For that water that's coming into that inlet. That's one way you could do it. Another way you could do it is you could come in here and use your place catchment tool, define what your drainage area is, and then you'd have to come in here later on to that place catchment tool, go to the properties of it, and change the runoff coefficient to what it should be for that area. And that's something that you would manually have to do. And that's perfectly fine. And then whenever it does the calculations later on, it'll know how much water should be coming into each one of those inlets. So you'd have to go through there and put in those drainage areas. The other way you can do it is you can come in here and use what they call a place land use area. And then later on, use that in combination with the place catchment tool. And what that will do is whenever you use the place land use area, you go through here and define your land use area. So you may have an area that's all pavement. You have an area that's rocky. Maybe you have another area that is, you know, just grassy. So you would put in those land use areas. And then later on, whenever you use the place catchment tool, whenever you place that drainage area and it overlaps those land use areas, it automatically figure out what the runoff coefficient number should be for that drainage area that you're defining. And that's what we'll do for this example. All three ways are perfectly fine. Whichever one you feel comfortable with, you can use whenever you're doing your drainage project. So to do that, we're going to use the place land use area. And there's just a few options inside of here. You got your methods, which allows you to either pick a shape or pick points or you can go out there, out there and just define points for that land use area and also a flood fill. We're going to use the pick shape because I've already gone out here and create a couple shapes, just some simple microstation shapes that I can use to simply select that. And that's probably going to be easier to do versus doing it through the actual place land use area tool here. And then the next thing that you want to do is figure out what your land use area is. And underneath the area, surface polygon, you're going to have two different folders. One that says rule and one that says urban. If you select the one that says rule, you're going to see a bunch of different options that you can select down through here. And those are just defined areas that you can select that's set up in the engineering policy guide, depending on what area that is for different types of soil type, depending on what part of the, of the state that you're in. You'd go through here and select whichever one of those that is for that particular area. And then whether it's cultivated land and hilly or wooded or pasture and stuff like that. So that's one option with that right through there. If you're in a rural area, if you're in an urban area, we have some other ones that are underneath there. And like I said, those are defined in the engineering policy guide. So like this one right here, we're going to select the one underneath the urban folder that says streets and roofs. Because I have this area right through here set up for streets and roofs because that runoff coefficient is fairly high in that area because it's hard pavement. The water is going to go from point A to point B pretty quickly. So once I have that, now I've just simply come through here and follow the prompts. So it says pick shape. I want to go ahead and select that method because that's what it's prompting me to do first. And now it says to select the shape. So I'll go through here and select the shape. I'm hovering over top of this one right here, which is the incorrect one. I'm going to go ahead and right click one time. And you'll see that it's going to highlight the one above it. And that's the one that I want. So I will select it. And now you'll see that 
for that particular feature definition, this is the color for that. So now it basically took that microstation shape and converted it into a land use area that the drainage program can utilize in conjunction with the place catchment tool later on. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for this shape right here, which I'll go ahead and change my feature definition from streets and roofs to sodded roadway slopes. And then I'll just follow the prompts. I'll select the method, which is pick shape. I'll go ahead and select the shape, which is this one right here. And then I will go ahead and hit F4 to clear it out. So now you'll see that I have two shapes out here that the drainage program can utilize in conjunction with the place sketchment tool later on. Now, just to review those real quick, if I go ahead and select on one of those, and I can go to the physical properties of it through my dynamic toolbar, no different than your other drainage options that you have for your nodes and your conduits, you can go down through here and look at some of the physical properties of that particular place land use area. There's not many inside of here, but things that you can review, like the how much area that it's being defined, what the feature definition is. You can come in here and change it inside of here if you wish to do that. But that just gives you some of the physical properties of it. If I go back and get to my dynamic toolbar and go to the utility properties, underneath the drainage tab, you'll see the hydraulic aspects of it. And this is where you want to look at the land cover options and possibly see what that C value is for that particular area. So like this one right here for the soldered roadway slopes, it's got a composite C value of 0.5. So the water going through that area is going to go a little bit slower versus this other one right here. You'll see for the streets and roofs, you'll see it's 0.8. So that water will run faster through that area because of course it's it's hard pavement. And there's no restrictions of how that water can flow through there. And of course you can see the, the area of it and some other aspects of it. So that's the basics of using the place land use area. It just allows you to go through there and place those land use areas out there to be used in conjunction later on with the place catchment tool in order for it to average out a C value for that drainage area.